Welcome to CIA, Contagious Influencers of America. My name is Tim Story. They call me the life coach to the stars. I have with me nine-time Emmy Award winner, and his name is David Sams. David, wow. These podcasts have been amazing. I am having the time of my life traveling around the country and soon around the world getting these amazing, amazing stories, testimonials, uh, inside uh, scoops on believers. The feedback. These these are people of faith who are just on fire for uh, the amazing promises of God. One of them I stumbled across that we're going to feature today. Yes. I have had on my heart for a long time special needs ministries. Uh, we've seen some amazing ministries, including uh, Johnny and Friends, mm-hmm. what they've been able to do over the, over the years. There is something lacking in the church as a whole, and that is special needs programs, especially as they relate to autism. Yes. A lot of folks just absolutely have no clue what to do with families, with, with kids with autism. A lot of churches have absolutely no idea of their responsibility as it relates to these families. First of all, do you know what the divorce rate is amongst families with children with autism? I do not. It's over 80%. See, just amazing. One out of 51 kids has been diagnosed in, is on the autism spectrum. So the amazing thing, as you're saying, is that somebody decided to get a God idea. That's Craig and Samantha Johnson. Yes. And we also have with us today their pastor, Joel Joel Osteen. Osteen. Right, right. Joel Osteen, one of the leading voices in the world. Right. Hooking up with Craig and Samantha Johnson, and you interviewed them. What an interview. Their story is amazing because they went to work for Pastor Osteen at uh, Lakewood Church, which is an amazing place, and uh, they had a son— that was diagnosed with autism. So the reason that they went there was not the reason they ended up really doing what they're now doing. Yes. Uh, They have created something called Champions Club. And when they began this ministry, and the church earmarked, I believe it was a half a million dollars to start this. I mean, this was not, you know, just a, oh, yeah, let's go start something down there. We got a special, we got an extra room down there. No, I mean, they made a real commitment to do this. Guess what happened when they started Champions Club at Lakewood Church? What happened? For uh, families with autism. They added 300 new families to the church within six months. Just amazing. And for many, many reasons. Because success is finding the need and filling it. And as we have here, one in every 51 kids is being diagnosed with autism. Yeah, and in Houston, what happened is that um, other churches, they were not there for these families. Only 2% of churches have any sort of outreach to families with special needs. Isn't that crazy? really is. To me, special needs represents the greatest way to attract. It's like a magnet. If you have special needs ministry in your church, what's going to happen is that people are going to find you and start going to church at your church. I'll give you an example. Now, this isn't exactly what we're talking about today, but I had a special need when I was going through my divorce. Yes. You know, and I needed special attention. I found out about divorce care. Okay. And divorce care is an amazing ministry for those who are going through divorce. And you basically go to a facility, go to church with a, a group of 20, 30, 40 other people going through what you're going through right now. Yes. And mm-hmm. uh, they hug you, they minister to you, they help you work through what you're going through. And I went through that for 13 weeks. I remember they were giving this at my church and... They ask those of us who showed up the first night, how many of you actually go to church here? I think there were 71 of us in the room, believe it or not. Yes. Of course, it's Southern California. A lot of people go through divorce, so it was a big class. But 71 people, right? Only 13 of us raised our hands that we went to church there. That meant to me that there were people that ended up in that church who did not go to that church because they needed that special attention, that love, that information Yes. at that point in time in their lives. Imagine if the church is a body, imagine if we were to open up our doors 
to those with special needs. Yes. Right? Like autism. It's just a matter of, as you're saying, paying attention to what is taking place. We see the same thing with mental illness. There's so Such much of a challenge with mental illness that we're facing today, and sometimes we just act like it's going to just go away. It's not. But uh, let's listen to the interview, Craig and Samantha Johnson and Pastor Joel Osteen. Let's do it. We're here now with Craig and Samantha Johnson. They're the founders of Champions Club for Special Needs Kids right here at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. This is the church that is pastored by Joel Osteen. And I have all three of them here now. And Samantha, I am going to start with you. Samantha, you're the real champion here, the mother of Connor, the inspiration, the boy behind the reason you all started Champions Club here at Lakewood Church. How do you feel when Connor was diagnosed on the autism spectrum? We thought we had our plan with our, we had a boy and a girl, and we thought, you know, that we were complete. We thought that was our, um, that was our family. Craig had a vasectomy, and I found out about four days later that we were pregnant with our surprise child. So it was definitely, it was a good surprise. Yeah. <laughs> well, not in the beginning. <laughs> uh, we, we had a plan. I mean, we had a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old boy and girl. We thought they'd graduate from college and we could be in the Winnebago going across country, you know, uh, doing things that we love to do. But God had a big, big, big plan in store for sure. So you lived in California for some time and then um, uh, you had a big move. I'll never forget the weekend. It was actually a challenging weekend. Uh, my my dad had was only 59 years old and he had a massive heart attack. And it was a week before we were leaving to come to Lakewood. So we did the funeral on the Friday. We said our farewell to our church on Saturday and Sunday. And then we left for Houston on Monday. So to say the least, it was an overwhelming experience. But it was definitely God. What got you to move from California to Texas? Well, um, Pastor Joel and Lakewood Church, they were about a year away from going in the compact center. So they were looking for staff that could uh, work with that growth and work with what they're about to do with the new vision. And so we were contacted to be a part of that. And uh, so for us, um, they were saying that it was going to grow 25,000 people in one year once they moved from the one building to the next. And it wasn't like Easter and they were going home after that. <laughs> they were staying, they said. So uh, to say the least, it was overwhelming because we knew just in the children family area, we had to gain 700 volunteers in one year. And then about six months into it, we found out that our son who would um, play with other friends, all of a sudden uh, now he was playing by himself. And where he would uh, give us a hug or show emotion, now he would look away and show no emotion. Um, where he was uh, talking to us, he stopped talking altogether. And the best way I could describe it, it was like a car wreck. One minute he was one way, and the next minute he was another. And so when those two huge events hit us, it was almost like the perfect storm and a pretty overwhelming time. Joel, you brought on Craig and Samantha for one purpose, but God had another idea. Yeah, it's been amazing, David, because Craig did originally come to work with the children and, you know, develop that ministry. But uh, when Craig's son was born with autism, it opened Craig's eyes to basically there's not really a place here at Lakewood for them. And, you know, I grew up in church and, uh, you know, after all these years, we didn't have anything for special needs. When Craig mentioned that, it felt right to me. There were parents not able to come to church because they couldn't, couldn't you know, they couldn't take care of their kids. But... When kid, uh, when Craig told me that, we just we knew it was right, and so we we didn't know it would have the impact that it's having today. Yeah, I mean, we 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 were like a lot of pastors, you know, we had no idea how much autism was growing at the time, and when it happened to our family, so many things change when that happens. Yeah, you start one, you know, you start dealing with things of what's happening in the home, and. When that happened with Connor, when he stopped talking, um, he knew 
what he wanted to say and that at one time he could speak, but he couldn't get it out. So he been, began having these terrible outbursts and these terrible fits. And he would have to point to everything, you know, to get what he wanted. And the outbursts got, got so overwhelming that uh, we were trying everything. and we, we, couldn't, we couldn't figure out what to do. And what really what changed it for us, what kind of got us focused on helping other people was first starting with our son. And he started having these fits, right? And I remember with Sam, they got so bad that one day she says, I don't know if I can take it anymore. And I'd never heard my wife say that. You know, my wife, uh, Sam, is my hero. <laughs> and what she was working through with our son was incredible. So for her to say that, I know she didn't mean it. It was just something that, that, that she was overwhelmed at the time. Tell me about that. That is a, it's a very hard obstacle course to maneuver because you, you go to the doctors and you feel like, you know, when your child's sick, you get to the doctor and they can help you. This was kind of the doctors don't have a lot. They just want to give you a book to read or they send you home with, you know, all this information. And it really is something, um, you know, each child is so different. Each family is so different. But I think it's the one thing that you can't rely so much on the doctors with because they're kind of stumped with the whole process. So it really is parents taking on, you know, the battle and, and finding finding the answers. And I think that was what was so difficult was I wanted someone to tell me what to do. And we actually had to just go out and, you know, you have to fight for your child, you know, to get them into programs or to get treatment for them. Um, there's not just a clear cut, do this and this and this, and your child's going to be okay. So as a parent, that's really scary to maneuver, you know, and then figuring out, well, how did this happen? Or why did this happen? And I think you deal with, um, you know, you deal with a lot of guilt of did I do this? Or what what happened? You know, why did this happen to my child? Why, why not? You know, it's just a lot that you've got to take on. And then when you you try something and you think, oh, this is this is going to be it. You get all excited and you find out you don't have the same results as maybe somebody else did. So then you got to start again and think of another therapy. And you're just, you know, it gets to a point where, where a lot of parents just do whatever it takes to try to help their child, whether it's, you know, mortgaging their house or, you know, flying to another um, state because there's a doctor in that area that they've heard, you know, can help. And so I think that's probably you're maneuvering this huge situation on your own. And I'll never forget, David, I was driving to, to, to work one day and I just asked God, why? You know, why is he struggling so much? We're trying everything. He's struggling so badly. And I'll never forget what God spoke to me. And it was almost like he was sitting in the seat next to me in the car, and he said, Craig, your child is not a burden. Your child is a gift. And I think that was a, a, a big thing to realize, even for what we're about to do, that these kids aren't something that we're just supposed to live with and, and just try to take care of, but they're a gift to us. And I said, God, what do you mean? I, 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 I know what you mean. You, I love my son. What are you saying? And he said, again, your child is not a burden. Your child's a gift. I said, what do you mean, God? And he said, you're looking at everything that's wrong with him. You're not looking at the one thing that's right with him. And I said, God, I love him. I, I, I care about him, but he's struggling so much. And then God just said it so clearly. He just said, Craig, I'm going to use your son to reach millions of people. Now, I got to be honest with you. <laughs> I was really at a vulnerable place. Even as a pastor, I could not imagine my son reaching millions of people at that time. My son could, I, and I told God this, I said, God, my son can't even ask for a drink of water. How's he going to reach millions of people? And I'll never forget what God spoke to me. He spoke to me four words, and I think these are the four words whenever you're in a desert or whenever you just need a cool cup of water, he'll speak these four words to you. And he just said, do you trust me? And, you know, I didn't give him the pastoral answer, right? I said, there is no cure for autism. I said, you're all we've got. But I said, I trust you. And 
right after I talked with God at that time, David, I thought it was going to get better. It got worse. The outburst got worse. We, I mean, we would just sit and cry, lay our heads on the pillow at night. And I remember looking over at my wife and saying, what do we do? You know, how do we work with this? And I thought it was crucial where we were at at Lakewood. You know, Joel's message is you're not a victim, you're a victor. And those messages kept on playing my head. And instead of listening to those voices, I run up to my son's room and I pick him up. I put my put in my head as I said, you're not a victim, you're a victor. I said, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I said, you're more than a conqueror. And I began to speak those words to a, into his life. And that was a starting point for us that we had to deal with so many attacks and, and, and thoughts in our mind. You know, you, I always tell people this. I said, you only got grace for a day. <laughs> you know, you, you, when you're dealing with a child with autism, you can't think about two weeks or three years or five years on the down the road. You've got to take today and make the best of it. But about three months later, all of a sudden, my wife came calling from upstairs. She said, Craig, Craig, get up here. Get up here. And I thought something was the matter. I knew she was up in Karen's room. And I, and I run upstairs. I said, what is it? She said, Craig, I, I was putting Karen to bed, and I was reading him a couple books. And she said, she said, all of a sudden, he began to speak. And he began to say one word after another word, one sentence after another sentence. Now you got to understand, I haven't heard my son put two words together in three years. I said, what do you mean? He began to speak and tears started rolling down my cheeks. And she said, he spoke. And I said, what do he say? And I'll never forget, my wife walks me over the bed, leans over the bed, and she says, Connor, say it for mommy and daddy. Say it again. And my little five-year-old boy lift up his head, and all of a sudden he began to speak, and he said, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. And that was my son's first words. And we weren't doing the golf clap. <laughs> we, we couldn't believe it. We were, we were so excited. And that's when the shift took place. Kids that were invisible before became visible. Uh, kids that were marginalized and many times forgotten, God helped me remember them and helped Sam to remember them. Because we were not only living it, every day, but we experienced that when you take your child to the pool and he walks in there and he's acting different and everybody turns to look at your child as a freak, that he's not a freak. He's just working through his challenges just like anybody else. And it showed us that we've got to begin to educate people. But the biggest thing that, that happened through that was I was walking into Lakewood Church, and I had another God encounter, and I, I, God all of a sudden stopped me. He said, look at what you're doing for, for typical kids. He said, it looks like Disneyland. He said, look at what you're doing for special needs kids. And we had one room with some caring individuals, and I knew it wasn't very much. He said, those kids deserve the very best, just like every other child. And he said, when you look in these kids' eyes, what you're seeing is me. Because when you do it on the least of these, you do it unto me. And he said, favor will follow you in every other area when you begin to reach out to these families. Because God told me, he said, I'm not going to let them be forgotten anymore. And so that was kind of the genesis of our mission and what began to take place from there on in. Joel, you know, one thing we're trying to do is to encourage churches, not, not hit them over the head, but sure. encourage them to, to let them know that if they want to grow their church, you know, a lot of churches still send out postcards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's no better way to grow a church than than by opening the door to those with special needs and the families of those. It's so important. It's something that we didn't see for, you know, maybe 30, 40 years. But uh, 
When we did, we never dreamed 300 families would join the church and just uh, the effect that it would have. And, you know, we would have done it if we would have known. We just didn't know. And I think a lot of, you know, my friends that have churches, we, we get in contact with them. It's the same way. They have the heart to help. But when, it was, when we were made aware of there are people that can't come to services because their children are not able to sit out there, it was a no-brainer for us. Again, not knowing that it would have this kind of impact, that there are that many people that have special needs children. Once you discovered that, and once you saw these kids in a different light, what happened next to make this happen uh, in a big way? The Champions Club. Well, I think that God told me two things. He said, whatever you build, you know, one, it can't, you can't turn away any kids. It's got to be that good. And then two, you got to take care of the parents as much as the kids. So there's got to be programs around it to help the parents. And so we went to the, some of the top researchers at the University of Texas Medical Center, and we asked them to be a part of this task force. And we told them what we were looking for. And to our surprise, we couldn't believe it. But they said, nobody's doing what you're talking about. And so they joined the task force. We went to some of the top educators uh, that were in the top special needs schools in the area, and they came apart. And then we found special needs parents, some great special needs parents, and we put them all together, and we began to work an entire year on what would become the Champions Club. And the Champions Club was going to be a holistic model, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So there was a physical therapy area, a sensory area, an educational area, and a spirit area. And what began to be put together, that would be the launch of Champions Club Development Center. I need help! Oh, help. We need help, Isaiah. Isaiah, no, You're gonna fall. Okay, we're now standing inside of the Champions Club here at Lakewood Church with Craig, as well as a volunteer, our Sally. Uh, Craig, you mentioned just a few moments ago the four key parts of Champions Club, mind, body, what, soul, and spirit. Now that we're in this environment, can you explain for the people listening how you are able to accomplish all four parts with the program? Yeah, we have four workstations at the Champions Club. There are four uh, different rooms, or you can have one room and four stations, and the stations are the educational, the spirit room, the motor room, and the one we're in right now is the sensory room. And the sensory room really works for the kids as a calming area. So when the kids are really frustrated or they're struggling when they show up, uh, this is an area that will really calm them. It also deals with all their senses. So uh, you have uh, different equipment here. For instance, there's uh, this, uh, is it called Spectra Magic? Uh, sensory Magic. Sensory Magic. And Century Magic uh, has 80 different visual videos uh, with music, and the kids just love it. They're, they're attracted to it. There's another piece of equipment that uh, when your voice moves, it moves with you. And yes, I'm about. sensitive. The, the Century Magic it also has um, educational aspects and not only English, but different other languages as well. Um, we have the Somatron, which is a giant beanbag um, that moves with uh, sound. So we uh, play worship songs and while they're getting, getting ministered with music, but then they're also um, feeling the the um, movement on, on the beanbag with the sound and the, the sound waves that the music makes. Um, we have a uh, rocking horse, um, so they're able to have fun, yet um, at the same moment they're able to practice on their balance and practice on and being able to focus more on their activities at the moment. And not all Champions Clubs are, are the same. So uh, you can start a Champions Club with very little money, and we can teach you how to do that with very little money and get the right equipment, or you could do it with a lot more equipment like this. Oh, that's awesome. With us now is one of the parents with children in Champions Club. Can you tell me your name? My name is Lydia Rios. And um, your uh, child's name? Emmanuel and Israel Serrano. What was life like before you discovered Champions Club? Well, <laughs> it, uh, I actually was married back then before, you know, before uh, finding out my sons uh, have disabilities. And, uh, and we started coming to church, 
and uh, we actually stop when they before they turn three, because uh, you know the on a regular class they they just told me like you can you know they don't cooperate they don't sit down and then we found out they had autism, and uh, heard that Lakewood had the Champions Club. And so I came and I brought my kids and so that allowed me to come to attend service and it was a blessing because uh, you know a few later uh, like one or two years later my husband left and, uh, and you know I, I stay alone and Champions Club the you know it's a family the you know the staff the, the volunteers they all loved on us and they kept us strong. When your husband left that must have really been a shock. Yes. Yes. Because uh, I didn't expect him to walk away. And tell me what it has been like having the support here and what it would be like without this support. I just I can imagine life without, you know, without church. I, you know, had PTSD after everything that happened and depression. And so being here and having the support from, from church and... Uh, it was more than just prayer, you know. They they actually walk with me. They, you know, they told me, Lydia, you can do this. They found me a, you know, a counselor. They watched my boys, and so my heart breaks when, you know, when families are not available, you know, allowed or they, or they can attend church because, uh, you know, other churches don't know, other people don't know that, you know, the, the kids require special attention, you know, and. I love the fact that Champions Club is not just like a, a room where the kids come and sit down and somebody's babysitting. They are actually come, they're learning, they have a routine, they, they um, you know, the volunteers know them. They know their needs, they know how to work with them, they know how to reinforce, how to work with their behavior. So it's, it's more than just, it's not, it's just not coming to, you know, like a childcare place. It's more than that. And they play, they jump. So. Uh, each room has its purpose, and each volunteer knows my kids. So, Thank you, Lydia. The volunteers here are, are truly amazing. Joining us now is... Joy Beard. Um, I've been volunteering here for two and a half years. What do you see that's unique about the Champions Club that you don't find other places? Um, I think a big part of it is the heart. It's people who aren't necessarily trained all the time. Um, they come in with just a heart for the population, a heart for serving kids with special needs. What do you hear from the parents? They're just constantly like, thank you so much. Thank you for all you do. We're so grateful that you have this. They definitely entrust us and have, you know, feel like their kids are safe and taken care of here. And I think they also love the fact that they can see the growth. Like we just had a new kid start at my service a few weeks ago. And the first week he came, he tantrumed almost the whole time, like that transition. He didn't he didn't know what to do. It was new and it was uncomfortable for him. And even while he was with us, he would often cry a lot. The next week he was tentative, but he went in on his own. The last two weeks, they take his shoes off and put him in the locker and he runs in on his own. And just like to see his personality and see the look on his mom and dad's face when he just walked in on his own, they were just amazed. Um, and the fact of even the day when he was tantruming, we weren't like oh mom dad we don't think we can take him we we're like it's it's okay we've got him like go to service enjoy it we've got this and I think just them knowing that we're not intimidated that we're not scared that we're here to love and to care for their kids and and to that we're equipped to support that um, they've been very they've been very grateful for that what would you say to other folks right now what can a Champions Club or a program of this type bring to a church I think it just it brings more of a sense of, of community and acceptance for everybody. It opens up the, the opportunity for families who have special needs children to be able to come to church because without a program like this or without a service, a lot of these kids can't go to your um, typical Sunday school classroom. They can't go in and be in service um, with their parents, and so oftentimes these families aren't coming to church. So by opening up and having something like this, it gives them the opportunity to come to hear about Jesus, to get fed with his word, um, that they wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to. And that, yes, they may find pastors who they can watch online, but coming and having that community and actually being um, you know, planted in a church makes a complete difference um, that you know, just continues to help support the kids as well. 
Wow, Craig, you know, there is just something so very special talking to the moms and the volunteers here at the Champions Club here at Lakewood. It is so obvious the impact that the relationship that they have to the church, to Lakewood, to Champions Club has just been life-changing. Can you tell me what happens to people at that point when they discover they have a child with autism and what happens to their church life? Well, I would say less than 2% of churches have anything for special needs in, in the world. And so when they don't have anything, they become what I call backdoor Christians in the beginning. They're moving from the back door because their child's acting up and they have to take them in the back foyer area. And then they try to come in church. And if there's nothing for them after a while, they just stop coming. Many of the families are uh, shut-ins. So they're living at home. Their church is watching somebody on TV or, or listening to somebody on the radio, and that becomes their church. And so most of them are not going to church. And I noticed it right away because we're sitting here in a church this large, and we've got 10 families in this one room. And I'm going, there's no way there can be 45,000 people here and only 10 special needs families. And so when we launched Champions Club, we didn't know what kind of response we were going to get. But I'll never forget, you know, staying in front of the congregation. I just said, I know you've been rejected by society. I know you felt rejected by the church. But we put together a program just for you and your family. And I know you feel forgotten, but you're not forgotten anymore. And when I said that, the crowd erupted. I mean, just just a standing ovation. And I remember thinking, man, this this is really, God's doing something here. I don't know what it is. And when we opened up Champions Club, in the first six months, over 300 families experienced Champions Club in the first six months. This is a magnet for churches. It really is. Never, we did it because it was the right thing to do. Of course, we, you know, if four people would have come, that'd have been fine. Never dreamed 300 families would come. Word spreads so fast when you're taking care of those with special needs, and it's just a... Uh, Again, it was a, it's a, one of the favorite things we do. We do a lot, of, a lot of great things, but there's nothing like, you know, providing, you know, a place for people that, you know, have some challenges to come. And then the parents get to enjoy the services, to be uplifted. Your volunteers, there's nothing like you and your volunteers helping those people. And so they leave inspired as well. And plus, we are able, Craig's able to put on these dinners we do for them and special plays for them. And we let the... We let the ones that have physical challenges volunteer as well. And, you know, somebody greeting you at the door that has autism or Down syndrome, there's, there, that says something, too, that, hey, you're valuable, and this is who's at Lakewood. So you had 300 new families come to Lakewood within six months. What did you hear from these families? They couldn't believe there was a program like this inside of the church because there was nothing like this inside the medical community in the area, nothing like this in, inside of a program anywhere in there. It was the best. And I'm not saying that to, to brag on us. I'm just saying that was our goal, you know, to get the best researchers and the best educators and help us come up with something. They couldn't believe a church could do it. And now we had Texas Medical Center, Children's Hospital, coming to see our program to see how they could do it in uh, their communities. And it was transformational. It transformed their lives. I mean, when you go from being shut in, not going anywhere and being rejected, people ask me this all the time, David, they say, you know, what kind of train do we have to have to do this? You know, uh, do we have to have specialists and all, all this? I would say it's 10% train and 90% love and acceptance. What families like mine are looking for is will you just open your heart up to us? Will you give us an opportunity? Will you, will you just do something for us? Because we want to be a part of your church. We want to be a part of your community. And we want to serve. And we want to give. And we want to be a part of what you have because we need hope. And that's what our families need. We're, we're just looking for hope every week. We know what we're living with. It's 24-7. It's like a refrigerator being carried on your back. Every single day, I watch my wife work through it and myself work through it and our son work through it. We know what we're dealing with. What we're looking for is hope. So let's talk about the hope that Champions Club is uh, providing to people. 
What are some of the results? What are you seeing? One of the things that we heard from a parent the other day, Linda, who's, who began to share her story about how her son had struggled in classroom, both behaviorally and then he wasn't being developed properly. He was really struggling. Um, she began to bring him to Champions Club. And that's one of the areas that we have educationally. We work with the kids and their numbers and their letters and all these different types of things. And he started to learn to count. He started to learn his alphabet. He started to learn different things that he was learning in Champions Club. And we did a survey recently that kind of parallels with that story. And it said that 86% of parents said that Champions Club has positively affected their child academically. And we've seen that within our own son's life, um, where lots of times it's one step forward and two steps back. But when you're getting that reinforcement and you're working with these kids on a constant basis, we're seeing them go to the next level. We had a neat experience with our son, too, in the Champions Club. He, even from an early age, he liked signing. And, you know, so he would sign different um, things. And there was a little boy in the Champions Club that didn't speak at all, and he just strictly signed. And he had been upset, and um, he was wanting his mom. And so Connor went over and just started signing, Mommy, we'll be right back. And he, you know was signing it back and forth and the teachers were just really touched to see that our son and a little boy were signing back and forth and so um, you know they got to tell the parent about it when the parent came to pick up the kids and so there's a lot of things that it just it sets up an environment for the kids to learn and that I think that was just a neat experience that we experienced with our own son. Yeah and you know it really works with them on their on the child's behavior you know, the behavior that they, they have to deal with so many different emotions, um, struggles, challenges. And I'll never forget one time with Connor, and this happens with a lot of kids, but Connor, uh, Connor has learned over 60 scriptures. He can quote over 60 scriptures now. And uh, one time he had hurt his foot and he cut it and Sam was putting hydrogen peroxide on his foot and we're consoling him and stuff. And we go, Connor, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And all of a sudden, Connor lifted up his head and he said, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and they will pray over him. And what he did is he quoted a scripture that identified with his emotion. And that's huge for a child. One, to share that emotion because they usually don't do that. Um, but to put scripture with that emotion, um, that's huge. And, you know, we ha we've had another statistic that 100% of parents said that Champions Clubs has positively affected their child's spiritual life. And so they're growing spiritually and, and they're developing spiritually. And so um, I remember an another story about, you know, the behavior. And this was so powerful, you know, um, there's this family in the church and they've got two sons with severe autism. And one of the sons I was walking by and I was coming by the champions club and I look in this room and this, this teenager had gotten so upset that welt started coming all up and down his chest and his back. And he, he had taken off his shirt and and he was sitting on this beanbag, and here were the Champions Club volunteers, and they were holding each one of his hands, and they were just rubbing his fingers and calming his, his, his fingers and just calming him down. And they sit there for over 45 minutes working with this young boy who had had a meltdown and who had physically it affected him. And the parents came to him afterwards, and they said, you don't know how much Champions Club has helped our son. The outbursts were worse before. And we, we, we just got a statistic back that said 96% of parents have seen positive changes in their child's behavior since attending Champions Club. But it all breaks down on willing to go that extra mile. And that's what happens a lot of times with churches is that they're not willing to go that extra mile with these families, but they do, <laughs> they're going to see transformation testimonies. They're going to see things that, that are truly impacting lives that are hurting and struggling. And it's going to transform the church as much as it's going to transform the family. 
So it's uh, basically been a decade since you launched Champions Club, and now you're starting these things in non-church environments as well. Well, describe to me what those places are like. So Champions Clubs are in churches uh, the size of 100, and they might have one room, and they have the four stations in the one room, and they're able to develop the, the children. They're in orphanages. So uh, if you go to third world countries, uh, the, the need is, is just horrible. I was in, 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 in Argentina and families drove a thousand miles to come and hear us speak when we were presenting about Champions Club. And there's one mom who drives six hours to church because Champions Club has made such a huge difference in her life. Um, they're in public schools, so it comes alongside their ABA curriculum, this model, this Champions Club model, and we're working on a public school curriculum right now. And then they're in homes. Um, we've developed what's called the, the Champions Club devotional series, and so there's 31 devotionals for parents to work with their kids every night, every day at home. So it doesn't matter the environment. Champions Club can work with any environment. Joel, there's somebody out there listening right now. It's just one person who uh, m maybe they're a parent of a special needs child and uh, maybe their child has autism. And they think, oh, it's just little old me. What do I know about starting a uh, ministry? What, do I, what difference can I make in my church? What would you tell that one person? Well, I would tell them maybe to talk to the leadership about it, you know, get, get some information about what it can do. Because, again, all the churches that I've talked to, they're more than willing to do something. It's not expensive to start something like this. We're not talking about millions of dollars. For very simple, um, for, you know, for low budget, you can get this going, and it's just really having the heart to help. And, uh, you know, word will catch on, and other people will want to bring their special needs children there as well. And uh, we know it's just, it's the heart of God to help those and you know, help those in need. You know, David, sometimes when we're trying to win people of Christ, we're all fish in the same pond. And here's a pond nobody's fishing in. There's over 50 million that ha in America alone that has special needs, over 30 million kids and teens. It, it's growing at an alarming rate. One in 51 kids are being diagnosed with autism. So it's going to hit your home through a friend, through a relative, one way or the other. It's time the church begins to respond to it. And it's not only going to help these families, it's going to build your church. I believe that this is the most unchurched people group because most of them have no other option but to stay at home. So how does a church, uh, if they wanted to start a uh, Champions Club, how does that happen? Yeah, all they have to do is go to our website and uh, they go to championsclub.org and they would contact us. Then we have set up a consultation with them and we'll find out you know, their scenario. Uh, maybe they don't have a room for a Champions Club. Then we'll work through that. Uh, if they don't have any volunteers, we'll work through that and help them recruit volunteers. If they need to fundraise, we'll work through that. But we will work with a church from the very start all the way through training, our consultation, training, and development and launch to help them start a special needs ministry in their church. Churches that tap in to reaching special needs families it's literally going to change the church as much as it's going to change the family. That's what's happened at our church. We have more testimonies that come out of Champions Club than just about any other ministry in the church. Out of 90 ministries at Lakewood Church, the Champions Club has the most retention out of any of the ministries at the church. So it impacts the volunteers. They build relationships with these kids, these families. The volunteers will tell you, I've been changed by this child's life and be able to work through that and see them, even if it's even if it's small little steps. I always say this, you know, what one may see as ordinary, another may see as a miracle. And for a family like mine, for for if a if your family, if you're able to sit down with your daughter or son, you're able to have a conversation, that would be a miracle for me. Just to have a conversation, me and my son going back and forth. And when we had that happen the other day where Connor was having a conversation, you know, and he was talking to other people, that was 
I can't tell you how huge that was for us. And things that we forget about would be miracles for my family. And what Champions Club or what Starting Special Needs Ministry will do, it will help you see the miracles that God is doing every day. And you'll remember to be thankful for things that you thought was no big deal, but to another family, it was one of the greatest blessings in the world. Well, thank you, Craig, and thank you, Samantha, and thank you, Pastor Joel. Thank you for the difference you are making in the lives of these kids and these families. And folks, I highly recommend you pick up a copy of Craig Johnson's book. It's called Champion. It's something that's really going to stir your heart and feed your soul. And also, check out championsclub.com. There you can find out more about this amazing ministry, how you can start a Champions Club in your area. And also, uh, this website provides a list of Champions Clubs all over the world. So, Tim, what really amazes me about what I learned at Lakewood yes. is the miracles can, that can happen when you choose to look at things differently. They decided we have got to look at things differently. We have got to open the doors to those who can't find a home, a church somewhere else. Yes. It is our responsibility to do just that. And as a result, they have been blessed many, many, many times over. There are now over 60 champions clubs around the world. And these are not just churches. Uh, There are school systems that are implementing champions clubs. And guess what? There are orphanages. Because there are countries with orphanages full of kids with special needs. With autism and special needs of, of all sorts. As Abs- ab- absolutely. Yeah. So I was just so thrilled. I saw these moms' faces up close in person. I did the interviews with the individual moms, not just with the, not with just Johnson's and, and with uh, Osteen, but with the moms. The mother who has the three autistic children whose husband flew the coop, Yeah, she just said, I found my family here. Did you get moved emotionally? Oh, are you kidding? Uh, you cannot look at uh, some of these stories or hear some of these stories and look at the mom's faces on what has happened since uh, these doors have been opened and, and not shed a tear. I, I cried with several of them. Yes. And the, the also the miracles of some of the children that have got into God's presence yeah. and are really getting healed. Yeah. They're seeing their scores go up. They're seeing their minds being renewed. They're seeing that they're not isolating themselves at at times where they were. So there's some real miracles that are taking place as well. Is that correct? Absolutely. And there are a lot of uh, folks who are now volunteers for the church who are on the autism spectrum. Yes. Uh, I believe that uh, Craig told me it was something like 90 people. It reminds me of the story, uh, David, of um, the stretcher bearer. And remember, there was a, a paralyzed man. And they wanted to get him to Jesus. And so he had heard that Jesus was close by, but he was paralyzed, which means he was immobile. So they needed four stretcher carriers, stretcher bearers, to carry the stretcher to get this man to Jesus, right? A lot of scholars believe that it was several miles away. So could you imagine that there's two people on each side? What if one guy said, my arm's getting tired, or... Uh, I didn't know it was going to be this far, and and they put down the stretcher. There would have been trouble because we needed four to properly carry him to get to Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. In your own life, we're moving into the segment that we call David facing his own Goliaths. When you have felt isolated, when you have felt down, when you have felt less than, would you agree that at times, even though we're the church, there were not enough stretcher bearers that were willing to stick with you on the journey. Uh, there are times that I feel like I have felt that way. Uh, there are times I felt like, uh, you know, I'm all alone. But then I'm reminded of a couple of things. Number one, I have a wonderful family. You sure do. 
they have propped me up many times when I have been down, when I've when I felt alone, they've been there for me. The other thing is that uh, I now have beautiful, wonderful, amazing, talented daughters who prop me up. I think the family has really uh, helped me tremendously. And I'm not too proud to say, I'm, I'm willing to share. Uh, there have been times that I felt very distraught yeah, and I felt alone and I've called uh, my dad in the middle of the night. I've called my uh, sister who's a couple years younger than I am in the middle of the night. And by the way, they, they live on the Eastern time zone. And many times I'd call them when I was in the Pacific time zone. So it can be three, four o'clock in the morning for them. And they take my calls. It's amazing what happens when you have somebody on the other end of the line that'll take your call. Yes. And I know a lot of folks don't have people like that. That are willing to go the extra mile. And we, we find this even with Craig and Samantha Johnson and also Pastor Joel Osteen. These are people that are willing to go the extra mile. But, David, if I could say this as a life coach, that I think that that's one reason you're willing to go the extra mile because you are that guy. I think that it's innate in you that you've always been that kind of person. I think you're compassionate, so that brings it out of you. But also you understand pain. Those of us who understand pain, man, don't you want to just stand in the gap for people? Well, that's like Lakewood. Uh, well, I have had my family in the past uh, to rely on when I'm down. A lot of folks don't have that. A lot of parents, especially moms with, uh, with, with kids with autism, uh, single moms, they have not had that support system yes. uh, to rely on. It is absolutely amazing. We had to put this church on. Uh, we had to put this church on to tell the amazing story of transformation and the amazing story of being the extended family for hundreds, if not thousands of moms that had nowhere to go. They have found that special bond, that special family at their local church there at Lakewood uh, through the Champions Club. So I just want to encourage I don't want to preach at anybody. I don't want to turn this into a pulpit here, okay? That's not that's not what we do here. But what we do here is to encourage people. We do. And we share tools with you uh, to help you get through whatever you're going through. And the one thing I want to share right now, and the one thing I want to encourage somebody listening right now, because I know there's somebody listening right now who we're, we're touching with this message, and that is go make it happen. You can start a Champions Club for as little as $500. Yeah. They created this system for any church of any size to really start a Champions Club. You don't need a half a million dollars. You can have a few hundred dollars to do it. Mm -hmm. So there is really no excuse. And a lot of people will say, yeah, but you know what? Um, I just don't know anything about that. Well, guess what? 50 years ago, people didn't know a lot about divorce. Right. Uh, people didn't want to talk about it in church. And like I said, when I went through my divorce 10 years ago, I went to divorce care at church, whereas 30, 40 years ago, people acted like it didn't exist, right? Well, somebody came up with a bright idea that, look, let's let's go love on people going through a divorce. Yes. And now it's like the biggest thing in church because people know that half their congregation is going to go through something. Unfortunately, that's true. So the same goes with this whole special needs thing. If you are a church leader or an influencer or on the board or whatever it is with your church, or if you, let's just say you're a big donor and you have some clout, okay? We know there are some of those out there too. You know, call up your pastor, call the church board, and really encourage them to look at serving those with special needs. Regardless of whether it's Champions Club or some other uh, mechanism to get special needs ministry into your church, please do it. You know, the era of marketing your church with postcards and, you know, all that stuff, theme weeks and, you know, doing app the movies and, boy, we've gotten so clever about how we market church, oh, right? Yeah. You know, what's the Bible tell us our number one responsibility is? Really, to walk in love and to help the hurting and to love the poor. And and those and, with special needs. And the bottom line is that yes. we're, we're biblically commanded to do that. By our estimation, less than 2% of the churches in America are actually paying attention to this. Yes. So if you want your church to grow, 
do what Lakewood Church did in Houston. Start a special needs ministry. Definitely consider a special needs ministry for autism. And you want to see your church grow by leaps and bound? I will guarantee you, you're going to see that happen just as they did. That's a beautiful thing. And I'm challenged as a pastor. We have the Congregation Church in Placentia. We have been talking about this because this was brought to us about two months ago. I'm going to instantly implement this. I will get all the information. We'll get the right team involved. This is touching me. And the fact that me and you are such good friends, you went and saw firsthand that it works. You heard the stories, the testimonies from the parents and the young people. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, folks, we are here to inspire you, to light a fire under you, to share stories, to share tools. And this is one of the most important episodes of this podcast that we have done or that we will ever do. Yes, I agree. I mean, a lot of these things are about entrepreneurship, about uh, making your dreams happen, about, uh, you know, going out and, and finding your purpose, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all great. But there is such a need right now to get behind this cause that I really do believe that it's one or two or three or four of you who are listening to this right now you're going to make a huge difference, a huge difference. And please do share this episode of the podcast. And whatever you do, get this to your into the hands of your pastor or members of your church board. Highly, highly encourage them to start a special needs uh, ministry in your church. I love it. This is Tim Story and David Sams. You are listening to CIA. David, we cannot go out of this program without you doing that amazing conclusion that you do about that life is supposed to be very colorful. Wait, you want me to sing I did it my way? Is that what you're saying? That's not what I'm asking, and I ask <laughs> that you please do not do that. <laughs> well, let's just remind people that you can find us almost everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, some of you probably can't get away from us now because we're on Alexa, Google, Apple, Apple Podcast, Podcast Addict, and we're on YouTube. So uh, YouTube's a lot of fun to look at. So please do share these podcast episodes. And remember, 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 remember that life is a lot more fun living it in living color. Wait. No, I can't think. See, you got me. So what have you, what have you done to me? And remember, life is so much fun. Oh, no. <laughs> no. And remember, I could say this. I, I could change it up a little bit. Okay, okay? this we week go. I'll change it up. We go. Life's too short to live in black and white. So go out there and live it, live in color. It sure is a lot more fun. I don't know if my voice was there, but I'm losing it all. <laughs> <laughs>